Worried about gout? Check out Euro, the effective urinary alkalinizer. Euro, neutralize your uric acid problem now. This is Kini News and I'm your host Prasad. The Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission has one job, to combat corruption. But what happens when you're incapable of doing that one thing you're set up to do? According to its chief Azam Baki, political funding and bribes are too difficult to differentiate. The MACC has not been able to find conclusive evidence to prove that politicians were offered money to switch parties. This is according to a report by Free Malaysia Today, which quoted the Anti-Graph Agency's chief, Azam Baki. In the report, Azam confirmed that the MACC had received reports of politicians being offered money to switch parties. However, he said it cannot be proved that money had been paid in any of the cases. Azam added that this is why the MACC supported the idea of having a law on political funding. According to Azam, it is hard to differentiate between political funds and bribes, and by enacting such a law, the country can ensure that political parties do not accept illegal funds. A law on political funding was first proposed in 2015 after the 1MDB scandal. However, the BN era bill was never brought to parliament. Pakatan Harpan had also promised to table the political financing bill in parliament when they took over federal power in 2018. In October 2019, then Law Minister Liu Vu Kyong, who has since passed away, said a political funding bill would be tabled in parliament in 2020, pending feedback and suggestions from the ministries. But the Pakatan Harpan government was ousted from power a few months later, leaving the matter unresolved. Najib Abdul Razak may need to watch his spending as he'll only be allowed to withdraw 100,000 ringgit a month as 1MDB moves to freeze his assets. The Kuala Lumpur High Court's Commercial Division has granted an ex parte Mariba injunction to 1MDB and its subsidiaries to freeze former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak and his agents' accounts. This is in relation to 1MDB's claim of 681 million US dollars that allegedly went into Najib's personal bank account. The ex parte application will allow the former Prime Minister to withdraw up to 100,000 ringgit monthly from his bank accounts to meet his expenditure and living expenses, reported The Edge. A Mariva injunction is a freezing or asset protection order that prevents a defendant or respondent from transferring assets that may include money held in banks or financial institutions pending the completion of a legal action. The freezing order only applies to Najib even as other former directors and board of advisors were named in the 1MDB suit. Najib will have to apply to 1MDB solicitors if he needs to withdraw more than 100,000 ringgit a month stipulated by the court. Najib's conviction in the 42 million SRC International Graph case was among the reasons that prompted 1MDB and its subsidiaries to apply for the freezing order. The court has fixed February 21st to hear Najib's arguments should he seek to dismiss the Mariva injunction. Anwar Ibrahim was hoping opposition parties could unite to defeat BN in Johor. Let's just say he hasn't been convincing enough to sell that idea and Pejuang would rather go solo. Pejuang does not plan on joining Pakatan Harapan's proposed big tent in the upcoming Johor state elections. This is according to Pejuang President Mukris Mahathir. He said any cooperation with other opposition parties might be considered later, but for now the party will not join any coalition and the candidates will contest on the Pejuang ticket. He added that they had entered into discussions with Muda, but no final decision had been made on cooperation for the Johor polls. However, he said there were no serious talks with other parties, such as Pakatan Harapan. Previously, opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim has suggested that all opposition parties, including Pejuang, Warisan and Muda, work together in the Johor state election. Anwar said that this was to ensure AMNO and BN will be defeated in the polls, starting from Johor. Speaking of Pejuang, its chairperson, Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, is recovering well after being discharged from IJN. Former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad today thanked well wishes as he shared an update on his recovery process after being treated at the National Heart Institute. Saya ucap terima kasih kerana ramai yang berdoa untuk saya pulih dan hasilnya ialah saya telah pulih daripada satu penyakit yang bagi saya lah amat tu saya dah ada kalanya saya tak harap uh, nak pulih 
tetapi Alhamdulillah dengan rawatan yang diberi di RJN saya boleh in a brief video uploaded on his social media pages, Mahathir said today he is able to walk, eat and sleep as usual. He was discharged from IGN on Saturday, following his third stay in about a month. Mahathir was admitted to IGN on January 20th, but the circumstances surrounding his latest hospitalization remained unclear. The Pijuang chairperson will turn 97 in July. The person in charge of the National Recovery Council may need to do some recovering himself, after being found positive of COVID-19. Former Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin has tested positive for COVID-19. In an announcement on Facebook, he said he was only experiencing mild symptoms and is in good condition. He said he will undergo self-quarantine at home. He also urged those likely to be his close contacts to adhere to the protocols set by the Health Ministry. His positive result came a day after he chaired the National Recovery Council. After the meeting yesterday, Muhyiddin also held a press conference attended by media personnel. The stage has been set for the Johor State election, with the EC announcing all the important dates today. The Election Commission has announced the dates for the Johor State election. In a press conference today, EC Chairperson Abdul Ghani Saleh said the election will take place on March 12th, with early voting set for March 8th. Nomination day is set for February 26th with a campaigning period of 14 days. Abdul Ghani added that the EC has appointed 56 election officers and 186 assistants. He said an additional 56 campaign enforcement teams will be introduced to monitor campaign activities. He added that the COVID-19 standard operating procedures are currently being updated by the EC, the Health Ministry and the National Security Council and will be announced at a later date. Johor's election is the fourth state election during the COVID-19 pandemic and after the 2018 general election. The Johor State Legislative Assembly, which was officially dissolved on January 23rd, has 56 seats. AMNO and Bursatu leaders continue to exchange blows. This time, it's between Razlan and Wan Saifu. AMNO Supreme Council member Razlan Rafi has called Wan Saifu Wan Jan a coward for threatening to expose the shortcomings of AMNO and BN. Razlan also challenged the Brasatu information chief to go public with the information he has. Razlan said this in response to Wan Saiful's warning to expose the failures of AMNO and BN during the previous administration. Wan Saiful also said he would expose the actions of BN leaders at the time. Citing a Free Malaysia Today report, Wan Saiful reportedly said that Prikatan National had its limits and also reminded AMNO not to test the coalition. One Saiful added that AMNO's strategy appears to be the character assassination of PN Chief Muhyiddin Yassin with various accusations. Malaysia's COVID-19 figures continue to rise, but so has the number of people receiving their booster shots. The Health Ministry today reported over 17,000 new COVID-19 cases. This is a large jump from the 13,000 cases reported yesterday. The fresh infections today are the highest in 145 days since September 17th last year. Meanwhile, some 53.9% of the adult population in Malaysia have received their COVID-19 booster dose. Health Director General Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah, through a Facebook posting, also revealed that the country's COVID-19 infectivity rate based on yesterday's daily cases was at 1.39. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. Prasad, thank you for watching.